Thank you for viewing a presentation on New York State Paid Family Leave. In this presentation, we'll share some important updates, including what's new for 2021 and information related to COVID-19 quarantine leave. As employers and HR professionals, you play an important role in implementing paid family leave and helping employees navigate this important benefit. As of January 1, 2021, paid family leave is in the final year of its four-year phase-in, with benefits now at maximum levels for this year and beyond. Over the last four years, paid family leave benefits have been significantly enhanced to further improve the lives of working New Yorkers and their families, including providing more time off, more uses for paid family leave, and more financial security. In today's presentation, we'll provide a brief refresher on New York paid family leave and how it works, share important updates for 2021, review key responsibilities as an employer or HR professional, go over some similarities and differences between paid family leave and FMLA, discuss New York State COVID-19 quarantine leave, and highlight the many resources available. Let's start with a bit of background. In April 2016, New York Paid Family Leave, the nation's strongest and most comprehensive paid family leave policy, was signed into law. Paid family leave is employee-funded insurance that helps employees be there for their family when they're most needed. Because of paid family leave, workers across New York no longer have to choose between caring for their loved ones and their jobs, as we now have employee-paid insurance to help in these critical times. For employers, paid family leave provides a predictable and defined structure for the time off employees take to handle their family situations. As mentioned, paid family leave is insurance, which is fully covered by employee contributions collected through a small payroll deduction. This critical benefit provides job-protected paid time off to employees who need time away from their jobs to bond with a newly born, adopted, or fostered child, or care for a family member with a serious health condition, or assist loved ones when a spouse, domestic partner, child, or parent is deployed abroad on active military service. Under new legislation signed into law in March 2020, paid family leave now also provides paid time off and job protection so employees can care for themselves or their minor dependent child when under a mandatory order of quarantine or isolation due to COVID-19. The order must be issued by the State of New York, the Department of Health, Local Board of Health, or any government entity duly authorized to issue such order due to COVID-19. We'll go into more detail on these uses later in the presentation, as they're a bit different from the others. In addition to paid time off, New York Paid Family Leave also has strong employee protections. Employees are guaranteed to return to the same or a comparable job after taking paid family leave. A comparable job is defined as a position with comparable employment benefits, pay, and other terms and conditions of employment. Employees are guaranteed continuation of health insurance on the same terms as if they had continued to work while out on paid family leave. If employees contribute to the cost of their health insurance, they must continue paying their portion of the premium while on leave. Employees are also guaranteed protection from discrimination and retaliation. Requesting or taking paid family leave cannot be held against them. As an employer or HR professional, it may be helpful for you to know the kinds of questions employees are asking, which could help direct the guidance you provide and the materials you make available. These are the top questions to the Paid Family Leave Helpline from employees. We'll cover the answers to all of these throughout today's presentation. But first, let's walk through a quick review of the three basic uses of paid family leave. We'll start with bonding with a child. Paid family leave provides both parents time to bond with a new child within the first 12 months of the birth, adoption, or foster placement of the child. Parents who work for different employers can take paid family leave at the same time to bond with the same child. Parents who work for the same employer can take it at the same time unless their employer prohibits it. In that case, they can take leave separately over the first 12 months following the child's birth, adoption, or foster placement. 
It's important to note that expectant mothers cannot take paid family leave for their own pregnancy. They can take it after the baby is born because paid family leave is used to care for someone else. A parent may be able to take paid family leave before the actual adoption or placement of a child if an absence from work is required for the adoption or placement to be finalized. Paid family leave is also available for employees to care for a spouse, domestic partner, child, stepchild, parent, parent-in-law, step-parent, grandparent, or grandchild who has a serious health condition. Siblings are not covered. To clarify, Domestic partner is defined broadly under the paid family leave law. It includes people who are not related by blood in a manner that would bar marriage in New York State and are dependent on one another for support. For example, an employee may be able to prove that they are in a domestic partnership by showing that they own property together or have children in common. A legal relationship is not necessary. It doesn't matter if these family members live outside of New York State or even outside of the country. Employees can take paid family leave to care for their family member as long as they are within close and continuing proximity. In other words, present at the same location as the family member they're caring for during the majority of the paid family leave period. This may include necessary physical care, emotional support, visitation, assistance in treatment, transportation, arranging for a change in care, assistance with essential daily living matters, and personal attendance services. In order to take this type of leave, the employee's family member must have a serious health condition. A serious health condition is defined as an illness, injury, or condition that requires either inpatient care in a hospital, hospice, or residential health facility, or continuing treatment or supervision by a health care provider. A COVID-19 diagnosis may qualify as a serious health condition. The third type of leave is for assisting during a military deployment. Paid family leave benefits are available when employees have a spouse, domestic partner, child, or parent on active service abroad, or who has been notified of an impending call or order of active service abroad and family assistance is needed. Reasons for paid family leave for an active service deployment are the same as the military provisions of the Federal Family Medical Leave Act, or FMLA. They cover the employee's spouse, domestic partner, child, or parent. There are a number of instances where paid family leave will help, shown here on the screen. As we mentioned, there are also two uses of paid family leave related to COVID-19, which we'll cover in a few minutes. Now let's take a look at the specific benefits available to employees under paid family leave and how it's paid for. As a reminder, 2021 is just the final year of the phase in and not the final year of the initiative itself. Paid family leave will still be available in 2022 and beyond. Paid family leave provides time off and wage benefits, which were gradually phased over a four year period that started in 2018. At that time, paid family leave provided eight weeks off at 50% pay, up to a cap. As of January 1, 2021, eligible employees can take up to 12 weeks of paid family leave at 67% of their average weekly wage, capped at 67% of the New York State average weekly wage. An employee's average weekly wage is based on their last eight weeks of pay prior to taking paid family leave. For 2021, the New York State average weekly wage is $1,450.17. It's important to note, employees can take this paid time off all at once or intermittently, but it must always be in full day increments. Paid family leave is fully funded through employee contributions. Each year, the Department of Financial Services sets the employee contribution rate to match the cost of coverage. In 2021, the payroll contribution is just over one half of 1% of an employee's gross wages each pay period. The maximum annual contribution is $385.84. If an employee earns less than the statewide average weekly wage, they will contribute less than the annual cap consistent with their actual wages. 
To estimate deductions, use the 2021 payroll deduction calculator on the Paid Family Leave website. Summarizing the updates for 2021, the number of weeks employees can take off in 2021 increased from 10 to 12. The wage benefit also increased from 60% of the employee's average weekly wage to 67% of the employee's average weekly wage, up to 67% of the statewide average weekly wage. The maximum weekly benefit for 2021 increased from $840.70 to $971.61. And, in line with the increase in benefits, the employee contribution also increased. As of January 1, 2021, employers can deduct at the new rate of 0.511% of an employee's gross wages each pay period. 2021 is the final year of a four-year phased-in approach, but paid family leave will continue in 2022 and beyond, with all the same benefits and uses available in 2021. Please keep in mind, public employers are not required to provide paid family leave benefits and may opt out of providing such benefits in future years with proper notice to employees. Now that we've covered the types of leave, the benefits, and the costs, let's review who is eligible to take paid family leave. Most private employers with one or more employees are required to have paid family leave insurance for their employees. Public employers may opt into the program. Employees of public employers who are represented by a union may be covered if paid family leave is collectively bargained. For covered employees, eligibility for taking paid family leave depends on meeting specific requirements for the amount of time employees have worked for their employer. Full-time employees who regularly work 20 or more hours per week are eligible for paid family leave after 26 consecutive weeks of employment with the same employer. Part-time employees who work a regular schedule of less than 20 hours per week are eligible after working 175 days, which do not need to be consecutive. Citizenship or immigration status is not a factor in employee eligibility. Paid family leave coverage is not optional for eligible employees. Employees can waive coverage if they regularly work fewer than 20 hours per week and won't work 175 days in a year, or if they regularly work 20 or more hours per week but won't be in employment with that employer 26 consecutive weeks. Seasonal workers are a good example of this. They may work full time, but for only three months out of the year. If an employee meets the criteria for waiving coverage, the employer must provide them with a waiver form, which is also available on the Paid Family Leave website. Employees who properly file a waiver will not make contributions and will not be eligible for paid family leave benefits. Employers should keep a copy of an employee's waiver on file. If an employee's schedule changes such that they no longer qualify for a waiver, their waiver will be automatically revoked within eight weeks of the schedule change. An employee can also voluntarily revoke a waiver at any time. If an employee's waiver is revoked, their employer will begin taking paid family leave contributions and collect any retroactive amounts due. Now we'll cover how employees request paid family leave and the employer's role in the process. Before applying, the employee must notify the employer at least 30 days before their leave will start, if it's foreseeable. Otherwise, they must notify their employer as soon as possible. Next, the employee will obtain the request form package for the type of leave they need to take and complete the request for paid family leave, form PFL1, following the instructions on the cover sheet. They'll make a copy for their records and submit it to their employer. The employer must fill out their section of the form and return it to the employee within three business days. This information includes items such as the employer's address, federal employer identification number, employee's date of hire, and last eight weeks of wages. If the employer does not complete their portion of the form, the employee can still submit the form and cannot be denied solely based on the employer not having filled out their portion. Employees will submit form PFL-1, 
the other request forms specific to the leave they're taking, and supporting documentation directly to the employer's paid family leave insurance carrier. They can submit their request before or within 30 days after the start of their leave before they risk losing benefits. In most cases, the insurance carrier must pay or deny benefits within 18 days of receiving the completed request package or the employee's first day of leave, whichever is later. Employees can get paid family leave request forms from their employer, their employer's insurance carrier, or directly from paidfamilyleave.ny.gov forms. If for some reason an employee's paid family leave request is denied or they have another claim-related dispute, such as amount of benefits or timeliness of a carrier's decision, they may request to have the decision reviewed by a neutral arbitrator the insurance carrier, or the employer if self-insured, will notify the employee of the reason for denial and provide them with information about requesting arbitration. Arbitration for paid family leave is handled by NAM, National Arbitration and Mediation. More information on arbitration is available at nyspfla.namadr.com. As mentioned earlier, an employer may not discriminate against an employee for requesting or taking paid family leave, and an employee is guaranteed job protection with the same or a comparable job upon return from paid family leave. If an employer does not return an employee to the same or a comparable job, terminates the employee, reduces the employee's pay and or benefits, or disciplines the employee in any way as a result of the employee requesting or taking paid family leave, the employee can file a discrimination claim with the Workers' Compensation Board. An administrative law judge may order an employer to reinstate an employee, pay any lost wages, pay attorney's fees, and pay up to $500 in penalties. The process and forms are available at paidfamilyleave.ny.gov or employees can call the Paid Family Leave Helpline for assistance at 844-337-6303. Paid Family Leave was designed to be easy for employers to implement. I'll now walk you through a checklist of employer responsibilities. Most private employers in New York State must have paid family leave insurance, so ensure coverage is in place. Generally, if employers are required to carry disability insurance, they're also required to carry paid family leave. This insurance is generally added to an existing disability insurance policy. Employers who are self-insured for disability must purchase a separate paid family leave policy or apply to the New York State Workers' Compensation Board to self-insure. For a list of insurers offering paid family leave policies, visit the Paid Family Leave section of the Department of Financial Services website, dfs.ny.gov pfl. Inform employees. Employee handbooks and or other written guidance to employees must be updated to include information on paid family leave. To make this easy for employers, we've posted model language on the employer section of paidfamilyleave.ny.gov. Employers can customize it or just fill in a few blanks and print it as is. Collect payroll contributions. Employers can now withhold at the 2021 contribution rate. Offer waivers to employees who qualify for one. Employers should identify any employees who qualify for a waiver. These are employees who regularly work fewer than 20 hours per week and won't work 175 days in a year, or who regularly work 20 or more hours per week but won't be in employment 26 consecutive weeks. If an employee meets the criteria for waiving coverage, the employer must provide them with a waiver form. As we shared earlier, if an employee waives coverage, they will not make contributions and will not be eligible for paid family leave benefits. Employers should keep a copy of an employee's waiver on file. Post an employee notice. Insurance carriers provide employers with a notice of compliance 
Form PFL-120, also known as Notice to Employees, stating they have paid family leave insurance and providing employees key information about the benefit. Self-insured employers can get this notice by contacting the New York State Workers' Compensation Board at certificates at wcb.ny.gov. Employers must post and maintain this notice in plain view, similar to how the signage for workers' compensation and disability insurance is displayed. Employers who receive a paid family leave claim must complete the employer section, Part B, of the Request for Paid Family Leave, Form PFL-1, and return it within three business days. The employer will be asked to provide the employee's last eight weeks of gross wages and calculate the average weekly wage. Employers should be sure to discuss any specific leave tracking or other processes with their paid family leave insurer. We are frequently asked about the similarities and differences between paid family leave and the Family Medical Leave Act. There are several similarities between New York's paid family leave and the Federal Family and Medical Leave Act. Both provide leave for bonding with a child, caring for a family member with a serious health condition, and assisting when a loved one is deployed abroad on active military service. Employees are also guaranteed that they'll return to the same or a comparable position, and their health insurance shall continue on the same terms as if the employee had continued to work. If employees contribute to the cost of their health insurance, they must continue to pay their portion of the premium cost while on leave. There are also a number of key differences. Paid family leave is paid, FMLA is not paid. All private employers will carry paid family leave insurance. FMLA does not include insurance and it has a 50 employee threshold for eligibility. The length of time an employee must work is different. In paid family leave, an employee who regularly works 20 or more hours a week must be in employment for 26 consecutive weeks for that employer, and an employee who regularly works fewer than 20 hours per week must work 175 days for the same employer, which do not need to be consecutive. For FMLA, employees must have worked for a full year and 1,250 hours in the last 52 weeks to qualify. One of the biggest distinctions is that under New York's paid family leave, an employee takes leave to care for someone else, not for their own health condition. FMLA allows employees to take leave for their own health condition. Paid family leave is only taken in full day increments. FMLA may be taken hourly. Also, under paid family leave, employees do not need to use other paid time off first. As mentioned earlier, there are two additional uses of paid family leave that took effect under emergency legislation enacted in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The legislation allows for a combination of New York paid family leave and disability benefits if an employee is under an order of mandatory or precautionary quarantine or isolation due to COVID-19. This is the only time employees may receive paid family leave and disability benefits at the same time. It also gives employees access to paid family leave if their minor dependent child is under an order of mandatory or precautionary quarantine or isolation due to COVID-19. Eligible workers may apply for a combination of New York State paid family leave and disability benefits to receive their full pay up to a cap for some or all of the quarantine period. Employees may be eligible to receive 67% of their pay, up to a maximum weekly benefit of $840.70. Disability benefits will make up the difference in their salary, up to a maximum weekly benefit of $2,043.92, for a combined total of $2,884.62 per week. There's no waiting period, and employees will have job protection throughout the quarantine. Depending on the size of the employer, paid sick leave benefits may also be available and must be used prior to any PFL and disability benefits. Note, 
This will not apply for public employers or employers that have 100 or more employees because those employers are required to provide 14 days of paid sick leave. If an employee requests leave for their minor dependent child's quarantine or isolation, they may be eligible to receive 67% of their pay up to a maximum weekly benefit of $840.70. More detailed information about taking paid family leave for a personal quarantine or for a child's can be found at paidfamilyleave.ny.gov slash COVID-19. That page also includes information about New York State COVID-19 paid sick leave requirements, frequently asked questions, application forms, and more. New York paid family leave is now in year four. As we continue working closely with employers to ensure successful implementation of paid family leave throughout New York State, there are a number of resources to help. Complete details on paid family leave are available at paidfamilyleave.ny.gov, along with opt-in, request and waiver forms, fact sheets, weekly benefit and payroll deduction calculators, and a resource guide for small businesses. We've also created a special Updates for 2021 page available at paidfamilyleave.ny.gov slash 2021. It has a number of employer resources to help explain and communicate benefit and deduction changes. These include an overview of the changes, frequently asked questions, an updated employee statement of rights, updated model language that can be used for an employee handbook or other written materials, and a template to use to notify employees of their payroll deduction amount. We strongly encourage employers to inform employees of their new deduction amount. Employers and employees can also contact the Paid Family Leave Helpline at 844-337-6303 for assistance Monday through Friday from 8.30 in the morning until 4.30 in the afternoon. If you're not already subscribed for email updates on Paid Family Leave, you can subscribe by clicking Get Paid Family Leave Updates on the bottom of the paidfamilyleave.ny.gov homepage. Finally, we also want to make you aware of the board's Advocate for Business. The Advocate for Business is the liaison between New York's business community and the Workers' Compensation Board, giving employers one place to contact for answers to their workers' compensation questions, as well as any questions employers may have about paid family leave as it relates to your business. You can contact the Advocate for Business office at advocatebusiness at wcb.ny.gov. We hope you found this presentation helpful. Thank you for the opportunity to discuss New York's landmark paid family leave with you.